right, we are on the air this afternoon with some breaking news. The man accused of kidnapping North Conway teenager Abby Hernandez just entered the courtroom. Uh, you're looking at live pictures from inside that courtroom in Conway right now. That's right. And uh, seated in the front row of that courtroom, we believe, is Abby Hernandez and her mother, Zenia. We have seen the assistant attorney general, Jane Young, going over and speaking with them prior to these proceedings. Nathaniel Kirby, uh, Kibby, was arrested yesterday at his home in Gorham. We are now waiting to hear how authorities have connected him to this case. A lot of mystery in this case. The only piece of information that was released yesterday was that they had help from Abby herself. There's been a lot of speculation about this case. Uh, let's listen into this court proceeding. The court arranged for the public defender to be here at your arraignment. And, uh, and before I get to explaining the charge, um, I want you to be aware that you have the privilege to be free from self-incrimination and the right to be represented by an attorney at all stages of the case. And if uh, financially unable to afford counsel, the counsel will be appointed if requested. So, as an initial matter, are you requesting that the court appoint counsel? Yes, I am, Your Honor. Thank you. Do we have a uh, recent enough financial affidavit, or does Mr. Kibbe need to fill out another one? I believe the financial I have on record is not five. that old. It's five months. Yeah. Um, so, I believe OCC will be fine with that. If not, I'll notify. Thank you. Judge, as, as a preliminary matter prior to the arraignment, we filed a motion to ask him to unseal the affidavits, both the probable cause and search warrant affidavits. I would ask that we deal with that preliminarily prior to the arraignment. We're in the position that essentially all that we have is this one piece of paper. Um, there's more information that I think has been leaked out to all the press that are here that we have at this point. I think Mr. Kibbe is entitled constitutionally to that information. I believe the court has the motion in front of it. I I've provided a copy to Attorney Young. Um, I would ask that the court give us access to it. We have no problem with a protective order at this point. If the court wanted to limit access to myself and Attorney Schwartz at this point. But I think in order to zealously and adequately defend Nate, we need an opportunity to see that so we can advise them as to what we want to do, to get, do today in regards to the arraignment and in regards to bail issues, which I'm sure are going to come up in a moment. Well, as a preliminary matter, may I have counsel identify themselves for the record, please? Jesse Friedman, along with Allison Schwartz, for Mr. Kitty. Thank you. Good afternoon, Your Honor. Jane Young for the state, joined by Attorney General Joseph Foster and Attorney Stacy Pollock, P A W L I K. Thank you. Thank you. <coughs> So, with respect to that request, your um, Thank you, Your Honor. Your Honor, the uh, motion was handed to me probably in less than five minutes. Under, under the court rules, we have ten days to respond. We asked for the affidavit to be sealed. This is an ongoing investigation. We just received information within the last 48 hours that put us in a position that we could ask the court for the arrest. The court made it. There are searches that are being conducted at the defendant's house. The state is concerned that if any of that information gets out, it would compromise what is a very early investigation. That would include the defendant himself being able to provide information to others and to the jail or possible witnesses, witnesses honor that we may not even know at this time. So we vehemently object to this motion and we would ask the court the courtesy to at least be able to have 10 days to fully respond. And I would note um, I think that there was some indication that information has been leaked to the media. If the media has information, that certainly hasn't come from us. The media, as the court is well aware, are skilled individuals. They have ways of finding information. I would also note that the defendant probably has the best source of information in this matter. He has his client who can answer any questions he has, probably better than we have information now. Attorney Creighton. Judge, last I knew it's the state's burden to prove this case. Nate uh, has with him the presumption of innocence as he should. That's the way our system works and that's what the Constitution stands for. Um, the state is well aware of the fact that this was going to be an issue in relation to the affidavits. In fact, the last four cases that I've dealt with in their office, this exact issue has come up. I do not even have a copy of the motion they filed to seal the affidavits. I had no opportunity to be heard at that motion here. 
it is not supposed to be any time the state comes in and asks to keep information secret from the public, but even more so from the defendant, that it is pro forma stamped and they get more time to investigate. They hold the keys. If they wanted more time, if they didn't want information to become public, they could choose to arrest if they had probable cause whenever they chose to arrest. They did it this way. Nate's here before the court to be arraigned. Constitutionally has the right to representation. Constitutionally has the right to have us apprise him of what he's facing today, as well as to make an appropriate bail argument for him, assuming that the state is going to ask to detain him on cash bail. I can't do any of that in one sentence that's in a big piece of paper. Well, Attorney Friedman, um, the, the state uh, has 10 days to respond to this. The pro probable cause hearing will be scheduled, presumably, within 10 days. So you would be in a better position at the time of the probable cause hearing to uh, defend your, your client. This isn't an issue of defending your client. This is simply an arraignment and a bail hearing. Judge, conclusory statements as to ongoing investigation are not enough to trump the public's right to access and more particularly the defendant's right to defend himself. There needs to be a particularized showing on the part of the state as to why it would be so important for them to, to continue to seal this information. To give them 10 days to respond to a motion when we're here for arraignment today essentially renders today's arraignment meaningless. It renders our ability to advocate for Nate at the bail hearing meaningless. We'd be back for probable cause, but it would essentially be rendering the constitutional hearing of the arraignment a completely meaningless hearing. And again, I'm not asking for public disclosure at this point. I'm asking that we have access so we can understand what the facts of the case are and so we can appropriately and adequately advise Nate as to what he's doing here today. Thank you. The motion to unseal the arrest warrant at this stage is denied. I will tell you it's a judicially issued arrest warrant and issued by myself. There was no hearing. It was uh, 6.30 in the morning. Uh, Monday? Yesterday, Your Honor. Yesterday. Thank you. Monday. Um, so what, let's proceed with the uh, arraignment. The charge is that of a class B felony. Mr. Kibbe, if you'd stand up, please. Um, the allegation is that you have committed the offense of kidnapping on October 9th of 2013, um, and that the location of that offense was on the North South Road in Conway, New Hampshire. And the allegation is that you knowingly confined A.H., with the date of birth of 10-12-1998 with the purpose to com commit an offense against her. Class B felony uh, means that if you are convicted, you will be sentenced to the New Hampshire State Prison for a period not to exceed seven years. You could be ordered to pay a fine of up to $4,000 and you could be placed on probation for up to five years. Uh, in connection with this complaint, uh, if probable cause is found after a probable cause hearing in this court, uh, you would be bound over to the Carroll County Superior Court where you would be entitled to have a trial by jury. Attorney Friedman? Um, Judge, we would ask that you enter no plea. I would just like to point out part, part of the issue, and I don't mean to keep repeating this drum, the complaint cites with a purpose to commit an offense against her. I have no idea what offense they're alluding to because I don't have any information other than what's on this piece of paper. So I'm not sure as a matter of constitutionally defending Nate that I can even explain to him what he's being charged with because I don't know. Well, perhaps if you uh, listen to uh, the state's bail argument, I am making a, a reasonable assumption that the bail argument uh, is going to justify whatever is requested for, for bail. I'm going to likely touch on some factual issues. So Thank you. We just you know, one moment.
Again, live pictures from the courtroom up in Conway. Uh, Mr. Kibbe was read his rights briefly, and what you're hearing right now is a back and forth on whether to unseal the documents, these documents that would have details on why they arrested Mr. Kibbe on this uh, uh, charge of kidnapping. But it was read aloud again. What we do know, he was charged with a Class B felony of kidnapping for taking, allegedly taking, Abby Hernandez on North South Road in Conway on October. 9th, 2013, last October. And it is our understanding that that is Abby Hernandez right there, sitting in the front row in that courtroom beside her mother, Zenya, who made pleas for nine months that her daughter would be returned to her. Of course, at this point, we have no information as to how she was able to make the return home or where she's been over those last nine months. There's been a lot of speculation about what happened during this nine months, whether she may have been at this residence up in Gorham. We don't know that at this point. We were hoping to learn some information in these court documents, but as you heard from the frustration there from defense attorney Friedman, he is looking to get a look at these documents just for his team, not for the public, just for his team, but the uh, state arguing they wanted to keep these documents sealed because they don't want public disclosure because it may taint the case. Let's listen back in. I have had conversations with attorneys Friedman and Schwartz. My understanding is that at this juncture, they are not going to contest that request. They certainly can revisit that when the court conducts a probable cause hearing. But for now, the agreement is a million dollars cash only. Um, in light of that understanding, Your Honor, I don't think that there is a need to give the court an offer of proof unless, of course, of course the court feels differently. No, I, I think that with the agreement on bail, uh, we can, uh, that's satisfactory to me. And I understand, Your Honor, as I'm sure the defendant's attorney understand that this is a sort of a very unique request, but as the court is well aware, this is a unique case, and this bail is more than warranted in this case under the facts. Your Honor, we would also ask uh, for the standard conditions that the defendant, should he make the million dollars cash only bail, um, waiver of extradition. We would also, I haven't checked this one out with Attorney Friedman, but we would also ask for a daily reporting either to probation or to the Conway Police Department. And that the defendant have no contact with A.H. or any of her family members. No drugs, no alcohol, no firearms. Please. I just want to be clear that while we, we are not contesting the state's request for bail today, that in no way should mean that we believe that that amount of bail may ultimately be appropriate. We're reserving our right to argue bail when we come back to the proper process in 10 minutes. Attorney Jane Young, uh, Assistant Attorney General Jane Young, saying this is a very unique case. We're seeing the back of the head of the Attorney General, Joseph Foster. It's unique to have him sitting at the table. Sitting at the prosecutor's table right there. Uh, the defendant has just stood up.
and that is by mail, by telephone, by electronic media, by cell phone, by any method whatsoever, whether it's direct or indirect. And you are ordered not to interfere with those persons at their residences, schools, or places <coughs> of employment. And you're additionally ordered to refrain from going within 300 feet of where uh, those persons may be. You shall refrain from possessing a firearm, destructive device, dangerous weapon, or ammunition. And you shall refrain from any use of alcohol and use of a narcotic drug or controlled substance unless it is prescribed specifically to you. If you are released, you will be reporting daily to the probation department. You will be requi required to sign a waiver of extradition before release on bail. If you were to violate any of those conditions, you would be subject to immediate arrest and detention, subject to imprisonment for contempt of court, and subject to immediate revocation of your release. If you were to commit a misdemeanor level offense while on release, that misdemeanor would have an additional one year of imprisonment, making it a two year misdemeanor. And if you were to commit a felony, that felony would have an additional seven years of imprisonment. The waiver of extradition, um, if I can impose a agreement, do we review this with your client? Judge, I would ask at this point, up until the point of, of Nate being eligible for release, I would ask that we not have to execute this at this point, being that he's going to be in question. That's acceptable. Nothing at this juncture. Thank you.